In this next portion of our demonstration, we're going to take a look at a wire harness design using uh, the motor uh, from the uh, hand mixer demonstration. And so what we want to do is, in fact, what I'm going to do is just to kind of clean up a few things, is pick up uh, the uh, beaters and actually highlight those and just simply uh, hide those just so we can kind of zoom in on the area we're going to work on. Now one of the cool things about uh, harness design is that uh, when we go into harness you can see that we support creating wires, cables, bundles, and also we have a harness wizard which we're going to take a, take a look at. Before we do that though I want to point out that we can read in, for the harness wizard we can read in uh, information from an ECAD system. And in order to do that, normally an ECAD system will name uh, documents where I'll have a, like a document component name and where the wire will either enter or exit that particular component. Now in order for that to work, we also can in place activate into any one of these components or solid edge parts. And you'll notice under the Tools uh, tab, we have what we call an Assign Terminals tab. What that does is it allows us to name this uh, component, in this case we called it controller, and then we set the terminals to a name, we just called it 1, 2, 3, and 4. But that, that way when we read in from an ECAD system, if it's looking for a component called controller and terminal names 1, 2, 3, and 4, we've named them that. And of course we can, ch we can change this to any, anything that we want. We can delete it, uh, reset it to a different name, whatever the ECAD system might be looking for. So as I close and return back out, what we want to do then is go into our harness design in uh, Solid Edge ST4. And from there, what we want to do is take a look at, in this case, the harness wizard. That's what we're going to look at first. So as I kick that off, you'll notice that it's basically a three-step process. First of all, the document format. Maybe you're reading in from an ECAD system. In this case, we're just doing a sample, solid edge sample. And if you, uh, if you and I've already uh, created a .cmp file, which is a components file. That's the components that it's actually looking for. So I can just select that component file. And then it's also looking for connection uh, information. And so what I'm going to do is just read that in. So we've pointed to uh, the components and the connection, and so we can go to step two. Now, from that information that we're reading in from those text documents, you'll notice that it gives it a unique ID, each component, and it, there's basically three components listed here, the frame, the controller, the controller is what we in place activate into, and the brush fixture. And then it shows us the actual component uh, description. It shows that those parts are already populated. In other words, they've already been defined uh, in the system. Uh, what's kind of neat about this interface is they actually don't have to be populated. We actually allow you to select them or assign a component through this wizard as well. So they don't have to be predefined. After that, then you can go to the, the third and final step. And basically what that does is it shows us what, the e what we're reading in from these uh, component and connection files. It's looking uh, to call these paths, what their names will be. Uh, the from uh, component and the to component, uh, the from terminal and the to terminal. So it's looking for these numbers on each one of these components. And it's predefined a certain uh, gauge, in this case solid copper, uh, 24 gauge solid copper wires. So with that what we can do is I'm going to check and see, I'm going to add 20% uh, sheathing strip back length. We'll go ahead and click the OK button and hit the finish and you'll notice that right away the uh, system builds a point-to-point uh, -point, uh, path for our wire harness, and it took into consideration uh, th these three component these three components. Now, once it's read in here, obviously when you read in from an ECAD system, it doesn't know how to route it through different parts of uh, the assembly, so you might have to make a few uh, changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to uh, go to the blue dot that controls this particular point and I'm going to edit its definition. And what that does is it allows me to kind of lock into an axis if I want or a plane and then I can grab that dot and I can simply pull it out. So I'm just going to kind of drag that, drag that out and make sure it's in the location I'm looking for. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull it back and just kind of adjust it back a little bit. 
and again you might have to kind of work with it a little bit then you can go to the the other uh, point that's down below and if we need to adjust its location you can easily just kind of grab it and move it around where you need it to be now one of the other things that you'll notice is once those uh, points have been uh, been placed where you uh, were approximately where you want them to be the other thing would be to uh, adjust the wire itself and so I kinda like to show you some cool tools that we have for for doing that so again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the edit path option and you'll notice at the bottom anything that you do in solid edge in, in ST4 we prompt you for specific things uh, click on a space uh, point or drag to edit press Z to lock to to uh, axis or X to lock to plane so it kinda gives you some ideas on how to make a change and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the select tool and it says alt click to insert or remove points and what I'm gonna do is there's only one point here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to alt hold the alt key down and I'm gonna click to add a couple of points and I'm gonna add one more down here now once that's done what I can do then is I can redirect where I want those points to be so if I pick come up and do a redefine point you'll notice then once I get the view zoomed in right I can come up and I can actually select that point and that point's going to turn red and what that's doing is it's allowing me to relocate that point so what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to use uh, key point locate and pick this top circle and accept it then I'm going to pick that command again and I'm going to pick the second point and once it turns red I'm going to pick the bottom of that circle and you can see how it's going to drive it through uh, this particular hole or holder for or guide for this particular cable that we're actually going to build and I'm going to accept it and I'm going to do that for the next two points so it makes it easy for the user to redirect any paths that they create maybe they want to lock them into a specific location it allows them to do that so I'm just going to pick this point accept it and then to finish it up we can just select this final one and select this side of the and you notice how it very quickly uh, directs that for us now our path is running through these particular holes which will guide uh, the cable and keep them from getting uh, caught up in the fan or anything like that now a couple other things that we want to do you'll notice too that these paths down here when I put my cursor on them you notice it shows a little bit of a red and gold or, or yellow uh, dot and it highlights and says that the minimum bend radius has been violated so we need to fix that now if you open up Pathfinder <clears throat> and you actually look at the wires expand the wires you'll notice that the arrows in front of the wires mean that there's a little bit of a problem with this path so we need to fix that and basically all that is is, is really is that we just need to make some adjustments uh, to the path so if I edit the path it's going to show me the point, the dots to it and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick each one of these and just kind of pull it out so that it's not crimping uh, the how it enters into the um, get the triad out of the way and basically all you have to do is just click on the path and make an adjustment and then you notice that those arrows go away so it's showing us that we've actually corrected any errors uh, that was that might be causing uh, that particular uh, path to error out like that so once that's done one of the cool things that we can do once our wires are set up properly is we can come up to harness and we can actually do a cre create physical co uh, connector and it actually shows us what the wire that we've selected and the path or the route that it's taken uh, as far as the ones that we've we've created another thing that's kinda neat is we can also right mouse button click and do a hide all and I like to do a hide all on wires to get rid of the 2D geometry now if we need to make a uh, any kind of a change for example if I come up to uh, maybe this and I go into uh, 
face mode, so I'm going to just do a uh, control space bar. I can come up and I can pick, pick, uh, maybe pick this face, and then we can go into the uh, selection manager and just do uh, pick on this part and do, uh, let's see, recognize feature, and then we can get out of that, and then we can actually take this feature and maybe in synchronous design maybe we want to move that feature forward a little bit you'll notice that the wire path will update to any changes that we make uh, to our synchronous parts right at the right at the assembly level so it's very easy to adjust your wires uh, to uh, redirect them in any way and that's how easy it is when you read in from an ECAD uh, system now let's take a look at actually creating wires and cables without reading information in from an ECAD system. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually collapse and what I want to do is I want to turn on the body of this. I also want to turn on the handle and the turbo uh, and the box switch. Actually we don't need the turbo button or the handle we need the box switch to create our wires and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this particular model and the bottom one and under view I'm going to set those to white clear so we can kind of see inside those components now what we want to do is we want to run some wires from the switch down to the motor um, in order to better visualize what we actually need to do I'm going to use a uh, the set planes option and I'm going to pick this back plane and then dynamically I can cut a section through this part right in the area in which I need to run the wires and I need to run the wires down around this boss and down into this part so let's take a look at how easily we can do that the first thing I'm going to do is click on the wire command and it's going to bring up quick bar and give us some options basically it's saying where do you want to start your wire from so I'm just going to come up to this hole up here and I'm going to bring my wire out and I'm going to run it down to the bottom into the hole at the bottom and I'm going to accept that and then it gives me an option to pick a, uh, a gauge and of course we've got a long list of wire gauges here but I'll go ahead and select the green um, copper green 24 gauge and I'm going to preview it and it'll turn that wire color green showing me what it's going to create. Then what I want to do is I want to come down to the bottom side and I want to come out. Then I want to come back up to the top and I'm going to go into this hole and then I'm going to pick in this case maybe a solid copper orange 24 gauge wire and then I can preview it and finish it and it's going to create that wire for us very quickly. So I very quickly created two wires uh, from the switch down to the motor. Now if I want to run these through uh, what we would refer to as a cable, all I have to do is identify the cable command and then identify the two wires that I actually want to be included in that cable. Once I do that then I can actually uh, draw my sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to just sketch a a cable that goes down around that boss and and at that point it's going to ask me what type of cable and in this case I'm going to do 24 uh, 24 4 gauge and we can preview it and you'll notice it'll take those two wires and it'll actually run them through uh, a cable that we've just created now it's cut off here because I've uh, done that uh, cutting plane but we can we can open that back up in a minute and you'll kind of see what's happening there the other thing too is there's going to be a boss that comes down uh, around here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to adjust this cable over just a little bit so it goes around uh, that particular uh, boss that goes up into that component but then when we're done we can simply finish I can go back to the view and I can set the plane turn that off you can kind of see how it goes around there and then what we can do is um, come down to our harness design again and tell it to simply create the physical conductors to show us what the cable actually looks like and you'll see how it runs down around our part 
and into the actual motor itself. Again, very, very easy to use. Uh, and uh, hopefully all the tools there for you to adjust the wires as you're creating them from point to point. Another thing that I think uh, to finish this demo up is to talk a, just a, um, a second about the reports. Uh, when you're generating reports, you can generate a bill of materials. Uh, and if you do, for example, format, it shows that you can do um, uh, bill of materials for uh, all, of the, all of the components in this particular part. But more importantly, if we come out, you'll notice uh, as not only a bill of materials, you can do a harness report. We can do a report on the components and the connections. So if we take a look at maybe the connections, you'll notice it gives you the wire ID, the from to terminals and component IDs, and uh, the wire diameter and the actual cut length of the wires. All of this information can be read into the draft document as well. So again, really uh, some really uh, nice tools to get your harness type design uh, completed in a, in a uh, short period of time. So with that, this kind of completes the harness, uh, harness design and uh, what we'll do is we'll finish this demonstration up next with the draft environment.